Hey guys, welcome back to Genshin Interact. In today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about Lynette, just because she is going to be free for everyone in 4.0. And so we just kind of wanted to talk about her and give a little bit of our opinions on how good we think she will be. And also just do keep in mind that we are planning to start a Discord server once we reach 1,000 subscribers, and we are nearing that goal soon, so do help us out there. Anyways, now on to the video. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is her talents and then her passives first and foremost and looking at her normal attack it doesn't look anything too crazy anything too new about really what she can really do here but her skill is something that is going to be her main damage dealer on her kit basically here she's going to flick a mantle over herself and kind of go into uh, this enigma thrust and she's going to do animal damage when she does so and then when it hits opponents it will restore Lynette's HP based on her max HP and then the four seconds after that, she'll lose HP every second for the next four seconds. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind while you're actually using her for her skill is that you are going to get this HP boost, but that HP is going to be whittled down over four seconds. It does have a press and a hold version. This press version just only does that Enigma Thrust hit. And then her hold actually kind of goes into this Pilfering Shadow state, very similar to kind of how Yelon goes into her hold skill state. And basically the only other thing that Lynette also does in this state is she applies Shadow Sign to a nearby opponent. Do know that if you go too far away from the person that you are putting Shadow Sign on, if you go too far away, the Shadow Sign will be cancelled. And this basically just allows her to do uh, more damage when you actually do damage to them when they have the Shadow Sign applied to them. Her burst is similar to how Sucrose and Kazuha have their burst and a lot of other animal characters where they put this area down and it can absorb Hydro, Pyro, or Electro in their burst. And basically, this burst, though, is going to be helping other characters because it taunts nearby enemies. It'll be this little bottle cap box is what it's called, and it'll attract enemies to hit it and then deal animal damage. And then if it swirls Hydro, Pyro, or Electro, or Cryo, it'll actually then do that damage with, like, these vivid shots that'll go out off of them and then hit them as well. This is just something a little bit extra to maybe keep other enemies off of maybe your main damage dealer if they're a bow user. Very much to why she's very very good for her brother because never mind he has his own taunts that he can use but she has her taunts as well. Rift, what can you tell us about these little passives though that actually I think are going to be the biggest part of her kit? Yeah, I was looking at her passives and I really like her first one actually. You know, it's called Sophisticated Synergy and it says that within 10 seconds after using Magic Trick Astonishing Shift, which is her burst, uh, when there are one, two, three, or four elemental types in the party, all party members' attack will be increased by 8, 12, 16, and 20% respectively. And that just seems really good. Honestly, it kind of makes me think about, you know, how we use Kazuha and Sucrose as, you know, viridescent supports for our teams, but Kazuha is specific to giving damage bonus, while Sucrose is specific to giving EM bonuses. And I feel like she's going to fit that same role for the most part, but her version of that is going to be giving attack increase to your character. So it's just kind of a different take on a, another way to use a viridescent support in a team, which I really like. So that's going to be kind of cool and fun to play with. Her second passive is called Props Positively Prepped. And this states that after the Boggle Cat box summoned by uh, her burst, when this performs elemental conversion, her burst will deal 15% more damage. And this effect will persist until the boggle cat box's duration ends so it's just a little bit more damage in her burst which is kind of nice but i don't think it's as you know it's nothing to sneeze at i don't think it's anything like the first passive i think the first passive is like something that's going to be a lot more utilized and why people will want to use lynette and then she also has one passive called point mnemonics and this shows the location of nearby revival orbs on the mini map and the underwater stamina and HP gained from touching these orbs will be increased by 25%, so that it does make some of the underwater exploration and gameplay a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, I definitely think that her passives are actually going to be a really big part of her kit, like I just said earlier. So now looking a little bit more beyond her actual kit that she has, maybe looking at some weapons that are going to be a little bit better for her to use. Now, looking specifically at her burst and you know this is kind of what you're wanting to do to maybe keep that out on field that's mostly what supports like to do is get their burst out on field she does have an energy cost of 70 and well if you notice her skill does have a cooldown of 12 seconds which is pretty long even if you have maybe a 20 to 25 second duration of an entire team going through all their bursts and everything that is maybe a max of two times she can get her skill out in a rotation if you use her 
at the start of the rotation. So that means that she's not giving herself a lot of time to actually get a lot of energy back to her just because of how her skill works and how heavy her burst is needy for energy. So it seems like she's actually going to be needing a lot of energy, maybe even specifically from her weapons. You could use um, Favonia Sword, which is based off of crit hits, which actually works really, really well with the new uh, clock looking artifact set that'll help get more crit rate when you actually do elemental skill hits. Another weapon that's good is, you know, Festering Desire. I have that on my Bennett. I'm switching over to Sapwood Blade, which is another great weapon. Both of these weapons would be pretty good because Festering Desire has a very high energy recharge. Sapu Blade has a little bit less, but it does have a higher base attack, which will allow Lynette to do more damage. So that's a little bit on the difference there. Sacrificial is probably going to be her best four-star weapon, though. Sacrificial will allow her to use her skill more often. And if you use this Sacrificial, that'll allow you to use it twice. And if you get her C4, which is her fourth constellation, which we'll go into a little bit more later, but it'll give you another charge of her skill. So you could possibly, if you have a high refinement on Sacrificial Sword, you could always have recharges to her skill at all times to allow you to get your energy back a lot easier. And it'll make the team a lot easier to have that rotation go through better. Looking at the 5-star weapon, I only really see one because it is the only sword that has energy recharge as a main stat. But this weapon does do pretty well for Lynette because it has a, a crit rate increase on it. Plus it allows, uh, when you use and have that burst hits, it actually increases movement speed, attack speed, and normal charged hits uh, deal more damage based off of attack. So that'll help a little bit more, especially since this has a high base attack and whatnot of everything that you kind of need to do, plus a good amount of energy recharge. I think that this is a very, very good weapon for her to use as well. Uh, yeah, I totally agree on that. Um, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to using weapons for Lynette, I think your energy recharge is just really the most important thing, even over the ability of the weapon. You know, you should really just be focused on using an energy sword because, you know, it's a high energy cost burst. We're going to look into the artifact sets and talk about a little bit of those. Um, obviously, the first one is Viridescent Venerer, and she's going to be filling that role pretty well, in my opinion, of, you know, just being the Viridescent Swirler on a team, much like Sucrose and Kazwa. So, uh, I don't know, Vixen, do you have any other thoughts? Maybe you agree on me, or do you have other other sets maybe that Lynette could use? What about the new sets as well? Well, yeah, exactly. Going back to that other set that I was talking about earlier, that new clock-looking set is actually going to be increasing crit rate, like I was talking about earlier, which could help for Favonius for crit hits. It could just help in general for damage to maybe help her have a good, you know, damage set, considering she'll be a pretty good sub-DPS, a sort of quick swap we seem. I think that at the end of the day, she is going to be a pretty good damage dealer. So even yes, focusing on a four piece Viridescent, people think it's only a support. Do remember that two piece set is animo damage bonus. So that could help out a lot. If you are going a high constellation, which we're going to talk about in a second, but her high constellations, especially her C6, are going to allow her to do more on field damage and help that quick swap just do even more damage. If you want to go for a little bit more damage, you could do the two piece uh, Viridescent as well as you could do the two piece Desert Pavilion Chronicle, which both give the increase to Animo damage bonus, which will just help out more in her actual damage and maybe pairing that up with another set two piece that you like for maybe some more energy recharge. If your stats are a little bit more focusing on damage, it just depends on really kind of what you need. I think her artifact sets are kind of pick and choose, but I do think that like Rifts was talking about, four piece Viridescent is going to be her best set for most of her gameplay. Yeah, and so now moving on to maybe some of the stats you're looking for on those artifact sets that you're choosing. Obviously, we just talked about how she has a high cost burst with energy needs and stuff. So definitely ER is gonna be your top priority. But what other stats should I be looking for when I'm building my Lynette Vixen? Well, I think a lot of the stuff you're going to want to focus on besides ER is that's the main thing you're probably going to want to go for. If you have a good, we were talking about this earlier, if you have a good maybe enough ER that you're not having to focus too much on ER, it's going to depend on the team that you put her in first and foremost. Do you have another character that's a battery that helps feed her and then she can feed the other players? Is she the only battery on the team? If so, she's going to need a lot more energy recharge. So that could maybe change if you want to use an ER Sans or go heavy on ER on the substats. But I do think that at the end of the day, she is going to be focusing on ER. And maybe once you get around 200% energy recharge, you could maybe at that point just focus on attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, just help her do more off-field damage. She scales really, really well on that skill. And I think that's going to be a big part of her kit. 
that's going to help her quick swap out, do a lot of damage, get a lot of energy for the entire team as well as herself. So now we're going to talk a little bit about her upgrade materials. So this may or may not change in the future, but from what we've looked at, looking at Lynette's ascension materials and the materials she will need for her talents, to get Lynette up to 90, you know, you're going to be wanting to go after the Lumadosh Bells. Again, it's going to be very easy to get a lot of the Fontaine materials just because we are going to be getting a free uh, teleport waypoint in the realm of Farikart in the northern part of Sumeru in the desert region. You get this by completing the Archon quest in Mondstadt, so that's going to be pretty early on for a lot of new players. She'll also be taking Clockwork Mecha Drops, and these are those new enemies we'll have in Fontaine. And then her boss material, we believe, is going to be from the Icewind Suite. But Vixen, what does she use for her talents? Basically, looking at these Lynette talent materials, we're going to be looking at, once again, those Clockwork Mecha Drops, and you're going to be getting those gears specifically from those drops, and the actual talent materials that you're going to need to actually level them up are going to be the Order, the Teachings, Guide, and Philosophy Order. You're going to actually use those, and those domains are going to be found in Fontaine as well. And actually, the only thing that you can, besides the Hero's Wit, the Mora, and even a Crown, also besides the Animo Gems, you can focus on getting the Ever Ambers for, from Apep, the newest boss in Genshin as of right now. A lot of the next few characters are probably actually going to be using a lot of Apep's Oasis weekly boss drops, so do focus maybe if you're looking to actually use some of your resin each week. It's only 30 resin a week. After looking at her upgrade materials, we're now going to focus on her constellations. So her first constellation is a cold blade like a shadow, is the name. When Enigmatic faints Enigma Thrust, or her skills Enigma Thrust, hits an opponent with Shadow Sign, a vortex will be created at that opponent's position and will pull nearby opponents in. This is going to be very, very nice, considering a lot of the animal characters do have this ability to make a vortex of some sort to pull a lot of enemies in, which makes it a lot easier for your DPS to do more damage in a central location. Her C2 is Endless Mysteries. Whenever the bottle cap box or her burst, summoned by her burst, fires a vivid shot, which is when you infuse something, and then it'll do those vivid shots that I talked about earlier, it will fire an extra vivid shot. So basically doing a lot more damage in her burst, and then her C3, which is Cognition Inverting Gaze. This increases the level of her burst by three, and then Rift, what about the last three constellations that she has? So her fourth constellation is called Tacit Coordination, and honestly, in my opinion, this seems to be one of her best, just because we talked about earlier how she needs a lot of energy. Well, her fourth constellation gives her another charge of her skill, and that's very valuable. Her fifth constellation is called Obscuring Ambiguity, and this just increases the level of her skill by three. And then her sixth constellation is called Intent Identifying Insight. And this states that when Lynette uses her skills Enigma Thrust, she will gain an Animo Infusion and 20% Animo Damage Bonus for 6 seconds. I think this is really cool, but like, what, what do you think about this, Vixen? Well, her C6, like I said earlier, really helps her solidify that sub-DPS role with that Animo Infusion that she gets. And, you know, if you're going to be using that skill to get her skill back and you already have the C4, you have a possible way to actually have one skill for an animal infusion and it lasts for six seconds at this point in time you have six seconds with an animal infusion that then you can have that c4 that pops another time so you can use your skill have six seconds of an animal infusion you can pop your skill again because you now have two charges and have another six seconds of a rotation that puts 12 seconds on your time slot and if you have sacrificial most likely you've gained another charge of that by basically not having to use it because it ignores the CD when you use it on the Sacrificial Sword. So at this point you have three, which if you have six seconds and you can do it three times in a row, that's 18 seconds. Her cooldown for her skill is 12 seconds. What this basically means is that if you use it once and with the C6, you're gonna have it for six seconds, you can double it up with her C4 for 12 seconds. Sacrificial makes it 18 seconds. By that point, the 12 seconds is over. You can now have another charge. You can start right over again. So this could not necessarily go on forever because then it would eventually catch up on itself. But this does have a very, very long time of you actually having this animal infusion, which allows her to actually possibly be a DPS and more than a sub DPS on an actual team. So I think her C6 is very useful and very interesting and it allows for the character to be a little bit more than what she was maybe originally intended for or what she was originally used as on your account when you eventually get it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely sounds very fun to play with. But moving on, we're going to talk now about teams and how we think Lynette can be useful for 
all kinds of various teams you might have and use on your account. So Vixen, what are some teams that come to mind first? Because all I think of right now is a good Viridescent Venomer support where she's just replacing anywhere you would use Kazuha or Sucrose for the most part. But maybe you can, and like you just talked about with the C6, maybe you could talk about maybe some teams where she could actually be a driver or the quick swap sub DPS. I think a lot of the points that she's going to be using, yes, are going to be focusing on her being a support in that sub DPS type role. Very similar to like we talked about with Yelon and Kazuha somewhat. They're very good on damage scaling, but they do help a lot with the team first and foremost and have a damage as kind of a sub reaction. So she is going to be put most of the time in as a support in multiple different teams basically an element that actually gets swirled by animal she'll help as well as if you have like a soup team or basically four different elements it allows her to actually take more attack bonus to her passive that we talked about her first passive that helps more characters basically by giving them more attack with the more amount of elemental types that are in the party so she does really well in a few different teams Animo is just very good at being in multiple different teams and multiple different places so that you don't have to worry about it too much as a support. Now looking a little bit even in her damage for instance as you know being on that C6 specifically I wouldn't really put her in a damage instance until you get to that C6 just because she doesn't work too too well with it at least uh, as I know before actually using her. Lynette at the C6 is going to be helping a lot of different things. You're going to want to focus on using maybe a Farazon with her to maybe have that double animal, as well as Farazon helps her with animal damage bonus. Throwing on Bennett as well, and another person that can just buff maybe more attack on top of Lynette. Once again, I think Lynette can fit into so many different teams that just depending on how you build her, where you put her in, she can fit in so many different areas because of her being an animal character and because of her playstyle. Yeah, for sure. I do like seeing how she has kind of a duality once you get that C6 where she can be a support or she can be a DPS. Well, that'll be the end of our discussion over Lynette. Do remember we are making a Discord and are going to be releasing it when we hit 1000 subscribers or around that time period. And once again, we hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.